Hello, hello, I'm Brenton, one of our MCAT tutors here at Inspira Advantage, where we help students get into medical school and other professional programs. Today, we're evaporating confusion and condensing knowledge as we delve into distillation, a fundamental separation technique that is stable in both the chemistry lab and for the MCAT, specifically the chem phys sections. Get ready to learn how this purification process plays a very, very important role in separating liquid mixtures by exploiting their different boiling points of their components. Let's dive into the essence of distillation. At its core, distillation is about separation based on volatility. When a liquid mixture is heated, the component with the lower boiling point will, well, vapor, vaporize first. This vapor then travels away from the original mixture, is cooled, and condenses back into liquid into a separate container. The result? two or more distinct substances. The distillate, which is the liquid that has recondensed and is hopefully our purified product, and the residue, which is left behind in the boiling flask. There are three important flavors of distillation you need to know for the MCAT. The first is the most simplest and is named as such. It's just simple distillation. This is ideal for separating a liquid from a non-volatile impurity, or when the boiling points of two liquid liquids are different very, very significantly. Usually by more than 25 Celsius is what the MCAT's looking for. A good example here would be separating hexane from water. Hexane is gonna boil like a negative temperature and water is gonna take 100 Celsius. And vacuum distillation is a little bit different. You're gonna to wanna to use vacuum distillation when the boiling points are either very high, which can cause decomposition of your substance, or if you just have a super volatile substance and heating it could cause reactions or just general degradation of the substance. By reducing the pressure in the vacuum, we know that boiling will occur at a lower temperature, preserving the integrity of those compounds. And then the third method you need to know to the MCAT is called fractional distillation. This is used when the boiling points of components are closer together and requires a fractionating column, which allows for multiple cycles of condensation and vaporization, leading to a more refined separation. Most common though, vacuum distillation is going to be your go-to. Let's test your knowledge here a little bit with an example problem. Imagine you have a mixture of water and ethanol. Which type of distillation would you use and why? Well, this is kind of like the hexane and water explanation I gave earlier. Water we know is going to boil at 100 degrees Celsius and Ethanol boils at about 78 degrees Celsius. And because this is pretty close to 25 Celsius different, we could go for the simple distillation. On the MCAT, distillation is part of the broader topic of purification techniques, which also includes extraction, filtration, and various other types of chromatography. The MCAT may ask you to identify the appropriate separation technique for a given scenario or to understand the rationale behind the choice of technique. It's crucial not just to know how, but also the why behind each method as this reflects the practical applications you'll encounter in the MCAT and as a doctor. And if you haven't already watched our videos on extraction, filtration, and chromatography, I highly recommend you do, as they are an absolute point saver when it comes to the MCAT, not only the chem phys section, but will also save you a ton of points on bio biochem. Distillation is a favorite question for the MCAT because it's a concept that embodies the principle of phase changes and intermolecular forces. As you prepare for the MCAT, remember that mastery of such techniques is not just about passing a test, it's also about equipping yourself with the tools you'll need as a future medical professional. Thank you so much for turning into MCAT Bites, and until next time, keep distilling your knowledge down into its purest form. See you next time.